Hey, what is going on guys? Clickwood here back again with a new series here on the channel. Guys, what we're going to be doing here is taking a look at what I believe are going to be the Mutt card ratings for Madden 18 Ultimate Team, at least to start the season. Now, obviously, there are going to be promos and things like that that drop, and obviously, these cards are just the base ones that I think we'll start with somewhere around this range anyway. So what we're going to start off is, is with the top 10 halfbacks for Madden 18 Ultimate Team. If you guys enjoy this series, make sure that you drop a like on it, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you are new as well. And I also want to give a quick shout out to the person who created these custom cards, and that is on Twitter, Gold, S-U-L-F-T-I-N, Gold Sulston, and uh, that is Austin Pascal. He really did a great job on these. I think these are pretty damn cool looking cards. I'm sure that's not going to be exactly what they end up doing in the game. But anyway, it'll give you kind of a visual representation, so make sure you go over there and give him a follow on Twitter. With that said, guys, let's get into the list. Starting off at number 10 overall, we have Melvin Gordon. This is going to be a gold card, 83 overall of the San Diego Chargers. He had a really nice sophomore season. Rookie year wasn't particularly great, but last year was pretty damn good overall. A lot of people will talk about that he was touchdown dependent as far as a fantasy player goes, but overall he was actually quite good considering that San Diego didn't have the best offensive line. They had a lot of receiver problems. Teams were able to stack the box, and he still did pretty well. He actually shows up on this list, and Todd Gurley, who was a base elite last year, is not even in the top 10 this year, so that is pretty interesting. I do think, though, that Melvin Gordon deserves to be on this list at around number 10. We'll see what he ends up doing this year, but he looks like a guy who could very well get some really nice elite cards this year, depending on how things end up going for the Chargers and him this season. <laughs> At number nine, we have another guy who broke out last season, and that is Jay Ajayi. He had some monster games last year, a couple 200-yard games, and he is definitely looking like the guy who is going to lead the Miami Dolphins' backfield going into this season, and he's probably going to be one of the better guys as far as like breaking tackles and just being an overall interesting Madden running back. I think you take a look at what he can bring to the game. It's really similar to what you saw last year with a guy like Derrick Henry in Mutt cards, and I think Jay Ajayi could be a big-time player this year. At number eight, we have a guy who is going to be 85 overall, our first elite, Devonta Freeman of the Atlanta Falcons, Really had a nice season last year. He's had two good seasons back-to-back -back now. Tevin Coleman's another guy in this backfield who could have a decent Madden card, and I think that's actually why Devonta Freeman is not going to be rated super, super high this year, despite the fact that, again, he's had back-to-back -back pretty damn good seasons. He didn't have a base elite to start in Madden 17, so I do believe he's going to get one this year, but I do think it's going to be a little bit lower overall here, down at around the 85 range. <laughs> At number seven, we have a guy who is with a new team, Adrian Peterson, formerly of the Minnesota Vikings. We all know Adrian Peterson, one of the best Madden cards. The only real negative about Adrian Peterson, he does typically tend to have some fumbling issues, and also his receiving abilities aren't that great. And if you're somebody that believes in pass protection in Madden, uh, as far as your running backs go, he doesn't typically have that. But he has the speed, the strength, the trucking, all of that kind of stuff, the agility to be an absolute freaking beast. And I think even at 85 overall, he's going to be really good. <laughs> Up next, we have a rookie from last year, Jordan Howard, 85 overall as well. He had a really, really, really nice rookie season. I would say that he would be rated higher for me, but we kind of saw him get a little bit screwed, in my opinion, last year by EA, so I wouldn't be particularly surprised to see him down here at around the 85 range. I think he should be a little closer to 86 or 87, but again, these are just my predictions, so I do think that he'll probably be around the 85 range, just a base elite to start the season, and it could go from there. <laughs> Up next, we have another guy who has just made his return back to being a really relevant player, and that is DeMarco Murray of the Tennessee Titans, one of the top running backs last year. Again, real big-time return to glory for him now that he's in an offense that can really run the football. They have one of the better offensive lines in the game. They've also improved their receiving core, so we could see DeMarco Murray get some more lanes, less guys in the box, and we could see some serious upgrades for him this season. Tennessee looks like they're going to be a pretty good team, so I do believe he's going to get some 
some nice cards this season. Up next, we have LaShawn McCoy of the Buffalo Bills. Always a great player in Madden. He really does it all, to be honest with you. Receiving, rushing, he's got decent speed, amazing agility every single year. So I think, again, LaShawn McCoy is going to be one of those guys, one of the base elites who's going to be one that you're going to really want to look for. And I think at 87 overall, that seems about right for him. I think he's about the fourth best running back right now in the league, and I think think that that's probably around where EA will rate him, so we'll see what happens. Now we're getting into the elite tier, the top three guys. My personal favorite running back in the NFL right now, Ezekiel Elliott of my Dallas Cowboys, had an amazing rookie season, led the NFL in rushing. You could make a case that he should be the number one running back in the game. I don't think they're going to go quite that route because I believe that they have a couple of their other guys who EA just likes a little bit more, and, and arguably they're better, well-rounded backs. So I don't really have a complaint about it, but I think that Ezekiel Elliott here at an 88 overall, that's about right. I think he'll probably be 88, 89 overall, and that's pretty good to start the season. He will definitely get upgrades. <laughs> At number two, we have a guy who is, again, one of the more well-rounded players overall in the entire league. David Johnson had a nice season this past year. Very, very productive as both a runner and a receiver. And I believe that that's going to translate into his Mutt card as well. I would not be surprised if people believe that this David Johnson card ends up being the best base running back to start the season. You know, sometimes there are higher overall players, but definitely the attributes that David Johnson brings, the speed, the agility, the trucking, all of that kind of stuff, and the catching... He could be one of the best players in Mutt to start the season with his base card. And last but not least, the number one running back, in my opinion, who is going to be Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell obviously started the season last year a little late, but that's all right because of the suspension. But... He was still one of the absolute top running backs throughout the whole season. I mean, he finished as one of the elite running backs once again. Again, running the ball, catching the ball, doing everything that you would want out of a running back, being able to block out of the backfield. This guy is the total package, and most people would say that he is the top running back in the NFL right now. So I believe that EA is going to give him the benefit of the doubt and make him a 90, possibly even a 91 overall, depending if they're feeling a little a little froggy on their ratings. We'll see what ends up happening. I think they might be a little bit lower all, overall this year to start it off because I think that they decided last year, about midway through the season, that these plus ones and plus twos were pr really pissing people off. So they need to start a little o lower overall with the base cards, in my opinion, so that they don't have to do quite so much of just the plus ones and plus twos throughout the season to give us our player upgrades. So with that said, guys, that is going to do it for this list. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you drop a like on it and let me know in the comments section below. What do you guys think? Were there any players that I missed? Anybody that should be in the top 10 that isn't? And what do you think about the player ratings overall? Thanks again, guys. Be sure to drop a like. And of course, again, make sure that you go over on Twitter and follow Gold Sultan. Again, he was the one who created these cards and he, I think he really did a great job. So thanks again, guys. That is going to do it. And I will talk to you guys again soon.